In the previous lecture, we began our discussion on the Doppler effect of waves. We said that the Doppler effect is essentially the change in frequency that takes place because there's relative motion between the object that's creating that wave and the observer that's observing that wave. Now, in particularly, we saw that the frequency of a sound wave will increase when the sound source that's creating that sound wave is moving towards the stationary observer. So let's recall the following two cases. In case A, we have our stationary source and stationary observer, and in case B, we have our moving source that's creating our sound wave and the stationary observer. So in case A, notice that the velocity of the sound is the same exact velocity as in case B, and that's because the velocity of mechanical waves depends on the type of medium through which the wave is propagating. Also notice that the wavelength lambda for the stationary case is different than the wavelength in the moving case. So in the moving case, when our sound source is moving towards the stationary observer, the wavelength given by lambda prime is less than the wavelength given by lambda for the stationary case. And that means because the V sounds are the same and the lambda is less, the frequency has to be greater to compensate for that decrease in the wavelength because the V sound has to be exactly the same as before. So once again, if our sound source is moving towards our stationary observer, the frequency will increase, the wavelength will decrease, and the velocity of the sound wave will remain the same because the medium in both cases is exactly the same. We also were able to derive the following equation that gives us the frequency of our sound wave for the case when the sound source is moving towards our stationary observer. So this is the frequency for when the observer is stationary and the source is moving towards the observer and it's given by f prime where f prime is the new frequency is equal to f the old frequency divided by 1 minus v source divided by v sound so because this fraction is less than 1 that means this entire term will be greater than this term so f prime is greater than f now, what about the opposite case? What happens if the sound source is moving away from the stationary observer? So let's suppose we have our source that's moving away from the observer. Now, the wavelength given by lambda 2 prime is greater than this lambda, this wavelength of our original case, case A, where the sound source was stationary. And because V sound has to remain the same, because our wavelength prime 2 prime increases, the frequency 2 prime must decrease. So for the case when the observer is stationary and the sound source is moving away from the observer, the wavelength will increase and the frequency will decrease. Now, in the same way that in the previous lecture we were able to derive this equation for f prime, let's derive the equation for f2 prime, where f2 prime is the frequency, the new frequency of the sound wave for the case when our sound source is moving away from the stationary observer. So once again, case A, we have the stationary observer and the wavelength is given by lambda. Now in case B, our object that's creating the sound wave is moving away. So in some time period T given by capital T, let's say that our object that's creating the sound source moved this distance D. Now this entire distance between this crest and this crest 
test is our new wavelength given by lambda 2 prime. This distance is lambda. So to find the distance d, we simply take lambda 2 prime and subtract lambda. So d, this distance, is simply the product of the velocity of the source and the time it takes to travel to this distance. So d is equal to v source multiplied by t. Now the velocity of the sound as we saw in case a is simply lambda times frequency and since the period is equal to 1 divided by frequency the period is also equal to v sound uh, divided by lambda so this becomes t is equal to lambda divided by v sound. So now we want to calculate what lambda 2 prime is. If we find what lambda 2 prime is, we can use this equation to calculate what the frequency 2 prime is. Lambda 2 prime equals, well it's simply this entire distance, well it's this distance plus this distance. So lambda plus d, where d is simply v source multiplied by t. Now the t is equal to lambda divided by v sound, so this entire term can be plugged in for the t here. And we get lambda 2 prime is equal to lambda plus v source divided by v sound multiplied by lambda. Notice lambdas appear on both sides. We can take that out and we have lambda 2 prime is equal to lambda multiplied by 1 plus v source divided by v sound. Now from this equation we see that f2 prime is equal to v sound divided by lambda lambda 2 prime. Now lambda 2 prime is simply this entire equation. We take this and plug it in for lambda 2 prime and we get v sound divided by lambda is equal to 1 divided by 1 plus v source divided by v sound. So v sound divided by lambda, well that's simply the frequency, the original frequency for when the sound source was stationary. So we see that the new frequency for the sound wave for the case when the source is moving away from the stationary observer is given by this equation. The new frequency f2 prime is equal to the old frequency f divided by 1 plus v source divided by v sound. So because this entire denominator is a fraction that's greater than 1, that means our f2 prime will be less than f. So that basically implies that when our sound source is moving away from the stationary observer, the frequency will be less.